Yeah, so what happened to Grunt45 anyway? Uh, here I am, we're just, just doing a, a simulated, I, I launched Grunt without any payload. Uh, I put him up there just to simulate, now I'm doing a, a re-entry. See, this is this is while X-Cart 4 is is cruising around the planet, putting itself into orbit, getting ready for for the, the insertion into to transit to the moon. Ooh, come back. Pull back, pull back. I also made a really bad mistake. I left my RCS on, and I'm attempting to do this re-entry with no RCS whatsoever. No RCS, and, oh, by the way, yeah, Grunt doesn't even have SAS. Oh, okay. Steady, steady. Which, honestly, is being kind of tricky. Oh, I'm slowing down. Okay, this is good. This is good. Slow down. Okay, let's pull back, pull back, pull back. Whew! Okay. You know, on the one hand, it's good things happen kind of slow, but on the other hand, also when you're trying to pull up, it happens kind of slow. So yeah, here's Grunt. Successful re-entry, let's go for a landing. Uh, I've never yet attempted to put this thing down on land, and I'm not going to start now. Uh, Grunt is designed, it's a, it's a seaplane. I just learned today, I, I saw the, a, a little a news article about that there's uh, some, some uh, NASA's got a probe, a failed probe that was supposed to go to Mars and back, and they called it Grunt. I swear that I was uh, totally unaware of that thing whenever I thought of the name for this. I don't know why they called their Mars probe Grunt. It is not a giant reusable utility in transport, so they shouldn't have done that. Okay, so, hey, I just learned that Grunt is perfectly flyable through all the way through uh, re-entry from vacuum down, down to the down to 4,000 here with no RCS. So, hey, progress. I, I like learning things. <laughs> all right, we'll probably do the fast forward business because I'm just going to be spiraling down here and definitely do not, don't want to do one of those power dives. Yeah, we're just... I'm in no hurry to get down. I'll, I'll get down when I get down. Okay, here we are. Below a thousand meters. And dropping, start to time to think about how we're going to set up this landing run. See, I'm 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 thinking, I'm thinking that I might want to try as a larger, longer term goal as I play Kerbal Space Program. My my um, success so far with this particular vehicle prompts me to believe that it might my it might be possible to say. To, I'll, make, I'll make my goal to always use these reusable spacecraft, uh, space planes, as as my as my launch vehicles. I'll, I'll try. I'll just say that it's um, my goal. I suppose I shouldn't try to lock. I shouldn't say that I'll always use uh, airplanes for everything, but I'll I'll try to use um, space planes for for as much as possible. I'll just, I'll just make it that the, the preferred means of launching something is to have a vehicle that can re-enter and can come back and can be reused. Because I like the idea of reusing them. Even though, even though in actuality, the space shuttle turned out to be uh, more expensive per, uh, you know, per, per tonnage launched, per tonnage put into orbit at the end, just, it would have been just using the uh, you know, single-use rockets. Because of all, all the refurbishing, all the maintenance that the shuttle needed after every single flight. But hey, Kerbals, Kerbals don't really get all that crazy about maintenance and refurbishing and stuff, so I figure they could probably get away with it. I'm hoping that maybe, maybe whenever the an actual campaign mode is uh, is functioning in the game, that 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 will be a means of, say, to spend a whole lot on a reusable vehicle but but once you have it 
functioning uh, reusable vehicle, then it, if you use it several times, it'll pay for itself, and in, in, in the end, it'll be a viable, viable means of progress. I hope so. Okay. Yeah, we're already slow enough. Watching that vertical speed, watching the altimeter. Gonna touch down any second. There we go. Slow down, Haas. Whoa! Airplane! Whoa! Whoo! Okay. Okay. You can see that, even with the flotation of that, that front pontoon, the, the nose goes for a dip anyway. <laughs> yeah, Grunt 45. Welcome back to Kerbin. I really like this design. It's 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 the it's manners in flying. It it flies pretty decent once the once these solid rocket boosters say once they've actually fired, uh, you know, they're just these long, stiff, empty tubes. They're fairly lightweight, so the the, the balance it's pretty decent after once once those things are fired. You know what I haven't tried? I wonder if I can take off. From here, see the, see the plan is Grunt would land somewhere, then they'd uh, refuel it, and he'd fly back. He'd just fly through the atmosphere. He'd fly back to Kerbal Space Center. Let's see if I can take off from the water. I'm oh, sure I can. Anything break off? That doesn't even look like anything broke off. Okay. So yeah, everybody, everybody who very kindly left comments on they they, they wish they'd uh, seen Grunt returning. There you are. You get your wish. We now return to your Kerbal Space Program Moon mission, already in progress. Thank you. So you don't actually need the the orbital view, as you can tell when you're at the apoapsis and periapsis. It's whenever this thing is just perfectly horizontal, you know you're one or the other of them. Okay, do some gentle thrusting here. Just a little bit. And see if we can make a circular orbit. One ninety. Here, shut it down again. Let's get closer to that apoapsis. Let's not lose track of where that moon is. As reading er, a post by the developers themselves, they say the way the time the burn to actually go for the moon is whenever, um, is 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 whenever I come around the planet and whenever I see the moon coming up over the horizon of the planet, that's whenever I need to burn and 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 go for the actual uh, the the transition to lunar orbit. All right, let's go again. I can already tell that the vehicle is getting lighter. It's being not so, it's being a little bit easier to maneuver. To change the attitude. It's 180, and we're right about there. Okay, so my apoapsis is stable to 193. Periaps. Oh man, that is just about a perfect. Circular. That's 192.28. What is this? 193.17. Yeah, that's about as circular as you're ever going to get in this game. I'm happy with that. We There we are. And we still have half the fuel left in our over and under tanks. Have not yet touched the fuel in the... Yeah, let me see. Where the fuel? This is the fuel that's in the tip tanks. Haven't touched those yet. And, as planned, the actual fuel in the fuselage of the, the plane drained out just the way it was supposed to. That's good. That's very good. I'm kind of concerned... Let me see, which RCS tanks am I looking at here, though? Because a couple of these RCS tanks that's showing... Would, the, would that be the RCS tank action? 
Hang on here. I'm not certain how much RCS fuel I have because this over here in the list on the left, it's act it's going to also display what I have in the um, the other vehicle in in Grunt. Okay. Oh no, that's these two. Yeah, because I can point to this one and it lights up over the left. Okay, so yeah, my orbiter here has barely touched barely touched the RCS fuel at all. Well, that's good. That's really good. See, I don't know how much of that stuff I'm going to need to use to go for this whole vertical landing once I get to the moon. It's because I haven't tried it before. I don't know how much it will need. Okay, we're in out of space. Let's do some more time compression, huh? Check that map. How close are, are we to seeing that? Oh, we're very, very close to seeing that moon come up over the horizon. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be it. We're, we're going to do it, man. I'm excited. I'm so excited. The design is working. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. That's the moon coming up. Okay, kill that time compression. Make sure we're pointed in the right direction here. Lock it in place. Let's burn. Let's do it. Let's try and get a little bit more perfectly lined up. It's important for this one. Put it right in the crosshairs there. Okay. Okay. We're just going to keep this burn going for a while. Okay, okay, so there's the burn that's pushing that apoapsis out way up in front. So the whole theory is, at this point we'll go up there, to the point where it matches the moon's orbit. And then the moon and, and, and I will follow this arc, and I will be appearing in the moon's orbit about the same time the moon's cruising by. Let's kill it right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. That looks pretty good. How much fuel I still got in my four? Okay, still got about a third tank left. That's good, because I'll, I'll need to burn that to I slow down and to go back the opposite direction whenever I get to get to the moon itself. All right. Okay, time compression. Let's go. And look behind us and can see that planet disappearing. Yeah, there it goes. Bye bye, Kerbin. Oh, that's even, yeah. There, there's. There's Kerbal Space Center. Alright, where'd the moon go? Come hey, moon, good boy. Keep on losing sight of the damn thing. Where is it? whole lot of sky out here. Can you keep track of <laughs> I can't see it. Maybe it's hiding behind the sun? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Alright. Okay. Okay. Pretty soon here, the moon should capture us. The moon's gravity, right? Right? Any time now? Any time now, and there we go. Okay, kill that time compression. Okay, now, now I need to point this thing 180 degrees the opposite direction. See, I get a move to the, the moon's gravity well, and what's happening is, it's it. I'm not actually. That doesn't mean that I'm actually moving towards the moon. I'm, I'm going the wrong direction. Actually, it's, the moon's just... Um, it's actually putting me on a slingshot path. So we need to correct, correct that. Okay. Good. Slow this down. Now I'm going to orbit around the moon. This is good.
Ooh, wow. See, I think I'm burned too much. The periapsis. That's gonna crash. That's okay. That's okay. I'll get up to the apoapsis. I can raise that periapsis again. That's okay. More time compression. Oh, that went in the wrong direction. Oh, that's bad. I didn't realize that. Oh, I thought... Ooh. Hang on, hang on. We need to... Okay. Here's what I need to do. Flip this thing around the opposite direction. Until I haven't done this a whole bunch of times. There's some of these people who have been in the moon dozens or hundreds of times. Until I haven't. <laughs> Center that thing right about there. How much fuel we still got? Still lots of fuel. Wow. Right in this direction. I just need to get some altitude here. Good. That's enough. Okay, okay. A periapsis down there 10 kilometers above the lunar surface. That's good. That's real good. I can tell we're a little bit... Yeah, slightly slightly north of the horizon. It's still it's still acceptable. It's still workable. I can make this work. Okay. Okay. Take a look at that thing. Yep, moon's getting bigger. Yep. Oh, I can actually see it moving in, in real time. I mean, I'm not in time compression right now. Okay, let's time compress. Let's get up close here. When I do this close approach to the lunar surface, I want to do a retro burn, bring that apoapsis down. Moon's looking pretty much bigger now, isn't it? Yep.